Welcome to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton. I'm Connor Williams, and uh, this is the Scout Report on Vitaly Mikolenko. I'm joined by Andrew Todos from Zoya Londonsk. Um, Andrew, firstly, welcome, um, welcome, and thank you for coming on, mate. No, cheers. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to chatting a bit about uh, the new recruit, uh, uh, Goodson Park. Yeah, well, we're excited to talk to you. This is um, this is a sort of signing that sort of had everyone I've spoke to a little bit like. I'll be quite honest with you. I only know of him from Football Manager and a couple of the people I've spoke to are very much on the same basis. Um, we don't watch a lot of Ukrainian football. Uh, he is very well rated on Football Manager. He turns into quite the nice left back on the game. Uh, and I'm sort of hoping that'll be a similar effect in real life. I hope he's you know, one of the ones they do get right in the millions they call out. Um, but I, my first question for you to get to know a little bit more about him is... Um, Tell us a little bit more about who he is then, because like I said, we don't know much about him. Who is he? What's he like? What can Everton fans look forward to seeing from him? Yeah, so starting off, he is a left back, as we, as I think everyone does know already. But he started off his, well, youth career, etc. He was mainly used as a centre-back. Then to whatever degree some of his coaches decided to shift him out wide because he's got a lot of pace. Um, got an eye for crossing as well and relatively good combining with the winger um, down that's on the same flank as him to you know to help out with attacking and that kind of thing and on the basis of the fact that he's got that pace very much helps out with his recoveries um, interceptions when he has to track back and uh, and likewise no problem you mentioned he was um, sent back in his youth I had a Google of him, obviously, once we're linked with him. Um, was he any good at centre-back? Just he doesn't look physically uh, imposing, as you'd think of a centre-back. You know, when you think six foot five, built like a brick house. No, exactly. I feel that that's one of probably the main reasons that he got shifted out to out wide, because he evidently doesn't have the physical stature. I feel that's the main thing. He's, you know, rel relatively good at tackling. Also, you know, defensively aware on the most part. But I feel that physical presence was what's lacking, and especially like in aerial challenges or something like that, like five foot 11, just under six foot, it's not going to be uh, too helpful for the most part. He has played at centre-back, though, in recent years due to like COVID and stuff over the past year. There's been a few absences in both Ukraine and uh, Dynamo Kiev's teams, and he's had to slot in there. But that's mainly when they're playing three at the back. So when he's that left-sided centre-back, it, it sort of still gives him the freedom to maybe go forward a bit and that kind of stuff. But I mean, on the whole, I don't think he's been recruited by Everton to fulfil that role in any small part. Um, but yeah, I, I feel that's the general consensus anyway. Yeah, no, I, that's the consensus the fans are getting from this transfer. Although it is nice to know that he has that versatility in his, um, in his locker because like you said, injuries are... Uh, a common problem in football and Everton seems to play that them uh, at the minute. Um, you mentioned a little bit of his strengths. Tell me a couple, uh, a couple more strengths and weaknesses we can expect to see from him. Yeah, so like I said, he's quite good at um, crossing, but what he likes to do is he likes to work on the overlap with his um, winger or whoever he's alongside on that, on that side of the pitch. Um, the crosses, though, I wouldn't say they're like sort of deep crosses that you get onto like to a target man or anything like that. He likes putting them into like near the front post, uh, maybe a lot of cutbacks. I'd say that probably his crossing strength are the low driven ones that he's got going for him. Um, and also he when he has to face up against a relatively quick slash strong winger uh, from the opponents, he's relatively good in containing them. Like, for example... Um, against Portugal a couple years ago when Ukraine played them um, at the Stade de Luz. He basically pocketed Ronaldo. Uh, OK, Ronaldo's not in the prime of his career, but still it was like for a 20-year-old uh, left-back to do that. It was, you know, a very, a very sort of big performance from him. And I mean, he's got a lot of experience playing against some of those top, top players. Maybe the UPL... Ukrainian Premier League isn't as strong as many believe and I can vouch for that it isn't and obviously it's a lot lower in level than uh, the Premier League but the experience he's got in the Champions League over the past two seasons 
and in the Europa League a few seasons before that as well, where he's played against some top sides, you know, Chelsea, um, Juventus, Barcelona, Bayern, the likes. So he, he knows what it is to play against top opposition. And the one thing that I feel that may be potentially different from his days at Dynamo is that evidently in the league, so weekly basis, more or less, he's very much up against a park the bus type scenario because Dynamo are one of the best sides in the league. And on the whole, he doesn't have to do so much defending as you'd expect. So when he comes to Everton, evidently in the current position that you guys are in at the moment kind of thing, I think that he will be required to um, step up in that respect on the basis that maybe over the past few years, he's not really been doing much of that on a in a regular kind of capacity. Um, albeit in the European games, he has been been required to do that on the basis that Dynamo are a lot weaker compared to their opposition. But yeah, overall, I think that he's got he's got a good tackle on him, um, good spatial awareness, and good at intercepting, uh, especially against those against those wingers that he'll be facing. Um, he has got a few weaknesses though, but I think we might come on to those in a bit. Well, we can we can do the weaknesses now if um, if you want. Um, before we do though, just you mentioned the crossing. You mentioned that he likes low driven. If he if he's asked, is he capable of putting in a high cross? Just obviously, we've got Dominic Calvert Lewin, who when fully fit is uh, a massive strength to us. But um, it'd sort of be a wasted sort of delivery if it's going straight to his feet and not straight at Dominic Calvert Lewin's headed area. No, I think he is definitely capable of it. It's just that. In his well, current sort of Dynamo team, he he's not required to do it so much because there's not that much of an aerial presence. They sometimes have a big target man in there, and when that's required, he he, he can do it. But I think even like looking at some of the stats, comparing both like Luca Din and McCollum at the moment, it is uh, he's definitely been putting in a lot less. But I feel that's more to do with the team that he plays in and the sort of requirements that he, he needs to do week in, week out against, you know, a team that's got a lot of defenders in the box, primarily as in the opposition that he plays against are very defensive. So the fact that the Premier League, I feel, is a lot more open, um, it, it should be more beneficial for him to be a bit more creative and um, free to put in those passes and uh, crosses that are required whenever whenever that will be needed. Uh, that sounds pretty good to me. Um, so go on and give me a couple of his uh, weaknesses as well, because um, every player has them. Yeah, um, so I feel decision-making is probably one of the key ones that a lot of people point out. Um, over the past year, so since the start of 2021, people have seen a bit of a stagnation for him in the in the UPL. And in certain matches, he's like got a lapse of concentration, might do something a bit stupid in terms of like instead of clearing it, might take an extra touch or try and um, dribble out of the position that he's in with like the with his back with his back to with his well, you know facing goal, that kind of thing. That sort of was quite um, a big mistake against Finland um, in a World Cup qualifier back in March. Where he did it in like the 88th minute, Ukraine were winning 1 0. Uh, Tuki straight ran straight into the back of him, kind of thing. McCulloch didn't know what to do, fouled him, last man in the box, penalty, Finland equalised. And then he was just sat on the steps of the stadium, like when he was sent off and it just like head in his hands. And he got a lot of, um, a lot of grief from that, like from fans and that kind of thing. But I feel it was um, a big learning curve for him. So, on the whole, I think the fact that that did happen probably has helped with his concentration in parts, but it definitely something that he definitely needs to work on. Um, and yeah, like I said, maybe aerially, if required, he probably needs to work on a bit of that just because he's not really been asked to deal with anything similar over the past few years of his career because um you know as a as a fullback it's it's not too often required but I know 
in the Premier League and the top leagues, you probably need all the skill set of a defender to properly succeed. So I feel that, that that's that's one thing. And then just in general, the fact that currently there's a winter break on in Ukraine, that was from like the 12th of December. So I don't exactly know if he, he's probably going to the gym and stuff, but he won't be match fit for, I don't know, for a few weeks at least after he signs, in my opinion. And then on top of that, to get adjusted to the pace of the Premier League, I think will probably take, I don't know, maybe a month, maybe a month or so. I, just on my general guessing from other Ukrainian players that have come in the past, it takes a bit of adjusting, especially, like I said, with him playing against a, a lot of sides in Ukraine that don't press quite low intensity matches where Dynamo Kiev are very much the ones on the front foot attacking a lot of the game. And then once they've got their few goals, they can set, they can take their foot off the gas because they're not really going to be threatened. He's going to have to come up, um, you know, up trumps with that in the Prem, where it's very much that for the night for the full 90 minutes where he's going to be able to, to be called upon and switched on. So that I feel is also linked with sort of the decision making, mental strength, that kind of thing. Um, but I think he's still young enough to be able to develop that. So I think that's one of the biggest positives that Everton are getting, even though you're paying a bit of like a bit of money for him. 17 million uh, has been quoted. He has got a lot of potential. So and I think he's still young enough to be nurtured into that talent that both yourself and I have been uh, talking about, you know, football manager and the likes. No problem. And um, yeah, you mentioned the price uh, and that coincidentally was my next question. Um, is it a good price? Are Everton getting a bargain or, or do you think they're slightly overpaying or do you think it's about fair? I'd say it's about fair, probably on potential because of what he can become because he's still young. I feel that Dynamo Kiev are very happy with what they've got for him. Just based on, as I've said, there's been a bit of stagnation over the past 12 months. And that's mainly, in my opinion, and a lot of other people's opinions, due to the fact that he's won the Premier League with Dynamo Kiev this, this summer. And that sort of like lifted the motivations off him in terms of as he's hit the ceiling in Ukraine, basically, and he needs a new challenge. Um, maybe he's lost a bit of that hunger that was required. And I feel this is sort of the perfect time for him to do that. So Dinamo Kiev, I think, very much happy to sell him. Hence, there was obviously issues back in the day with uh, good old Yarmolenko that you, I'm sure you're too familiar with. That was a massive saga on the basis that I'm sure that whatever valuation Everton wanted to pay for him, that probably didn't meet whatever the Dynamo owners wanted. I feel all parties will probably be satisfied in the long run. Um, if if it was like closer to maybe like 12, 14 million, I probably would have said, yeah, that's that's around the the price I'd say that he's probably really worth. But um, yeah, I guess we'll, we'll wait and see uh, once he actually hits the Brem and uh, gets going, hopefully well. Obviously, um, we've, you've mentioned, you know, the Premier League and you touched on the fact that um, it's different styles of play from what he's doing in the Ukrainian League to the Premier League. How, how do you think he'll adapt? Um, he's obviously 22 now, 23 next year, and has only played in the Ukrainian League, apart, obviously, internationals and European competitions, um, which, again, the experience is, you know, vastly uh, important. Um, but how do you think he'll adapt, not just physically, but mentally to the Premier League? Yeah, like I said, mentally, I think he should be OK. Um, I think he's pretty open. Like like we've already mentioned, he's already had a bit of that baptism of fire when he made that big mistake, got a lot of hate and all that kind of thing. Um, but I, I think he's going to be up for the challenge because he can see, take example from the likes of Zinchenko at City who are doing very well themselves and has adapted very well to sort of English life and the English game. And with his, you know, potentially his um, place in Ukraine squad up for stake, you know, if he doesn't carry on performing um, or if he drops off or anything, then that's obviously added motivation for him. And in general, I feel that 
it might take about up to six months for him to fully be engrossed in the Premier League. Just, you know, to get to get the grip of how intense the crowds are, because Ukraine in Ukraine, the crowds are not that great. Sadly, um, you won't get that intense week in, week out. Um, also, just the new culture that you'll probably have to be facing. Um, language. I know he, a few months ago, he had an interview saying that it was quite difficult for him to, he was learning English, but it's been quite difficult for him to do that. Um, but I feel that that was more probably due to the fact that he was still in Ukraine. It wasn't much of a, a requirement, 100% for him to learn it. But now that he has got, now that he's getting the move to England, he is going to more or less be forced to do that. And I mean, a lot of the other Ukrainian talents like Yarmolenko, Zinchuk, I think a lot of them didn't know much English themselves. And they're very much fluent in it now. So it, it will take a bit of time, but I think he should be good. He's shy character in general. I mean, to the media, um, I, he's got a, a few mates in the Dynamo Kiev team, of course. A bit of a joker. Um, but... I feel that that might also change with the fact that the Premier League is very aware with, you know, media training and all that kind of thing for the player. So probably first few months might be a bit quiet, but once he gets, once he gets that properly um, ingrained in him, he'll be a, a lot more of a popular figure among the fans, et cetera, once, um, once he sort of embraces the culture, to say the least. So I think it when you said that he was a bit shy in terms of the media, he's one of those players who's um <clears throat> does it let's let his football do the talking for him type of player then. Yeah, on the whole, he just doesn't do many interviews. Um when he does a few that they're fine, but it's just like there's not um a general act, act activeness in what he does like on social media or anything like that. He posts the odd photo on Instagram or something, but no, nothing too major. He likes, I think, keeping his private life to himself. Likes a lot of fishing. I feel that's his main hobby. So if someone can sort him out of a few rods and um, some spot on the Mersey or whoever else, he can. Uh, I think he'll be more than satisfied. Well, there's 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 plenty of fishing lakes around uh, Cheshire <laughs> as well and Merseyside, so he'll be right at home in all of them. Um, obviously, you've touched on his hobbies, and you know, these a bit keeps himself to himself. Um, what's his? Do you know any more about his personality? Um, how he and more specifically how he handles pressure. Obviously, you mentioned the um, Finland hiccup. Uh, I'm just thinking in terms of you know, can he handle pressure from crowds? Because uh, just because Everton fans, as much as we are um, supportive of players when they need it and when they play well, we can also be quite uh, ruthless to players who you know. Don't run, hit the ball running, or falter with very much um, yeah. split on that. No, I think definitely he has got experience of that for sure. Even though the crowds are relatively small in Ukraine, there's obviously like quite fierce ultra groups and stuff. And when the team aren't playing too well, they'll certainly make their voices heard. So he's got experience of that for sure. And even if we're talking about criticism from like managers, like if they're you know giving a word to him and that kind of thing. I think he's relatively receptive to that. Um, there's quite a funny viral video that went out, I think, earlier this year, potentially last year, when Andrew Shevchenko was still the Ukraine manager. And Mikolenko was like either laughing or just doing something that you can't see in the camera. And then Shevchenko just goes to him whilst, you know, the media was still there for like the open, open training session. He goes, um, what are you laughing at, uh, son? There's nothing to laugh about at the moment, that kind of thing. So it, I feel that he's still got a bit of maturi, maturing to do. That's that's for sure. You know, age 22, <laughs> not everyone's grown up just yet. So, but I think it, it will come. It will come. And I feel that England is probably a good place for that to happen, like the Premier League, um, compared to, for example, Ukraine, where it's still relatively a comfortable life for him. Nice, nice wage, not too difficult in the league. You play for the big team. You're not really expected to do much after hours, media stuff and all that kind of thing. 
you come into work, you go home from training, blah, blah, blah. Feel that now he's got a lot more responsibilities and hopefully you can take that on for him. Whether I would say he's like captain material or anything like that, probably not. Just based on his character, he's not like raw, like a proper leader type, but um, very much an important cog in a, in a system, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, yeah, I only ask because obviously in the last couple of years we had Leighton Baines and then we have Luca Dean, who I'm about to go on to in a minute, but they're, you know, big shoes to fill. Everton tend to tend to find their left backs uh, and, you know, demand a certain style from their left backs, which again, I'll get into in a minute. But I was just wondering if mentally you thought he was up to, you know, sort of filling those shoes. Yeah, in terms of character, like just, you know, Leighton Baines and Luca Dean, He's probably just on a. He's he's just a bit different, in my opinion. I don't think he's such a outspoken member of the team, um, but he is very popular, I think, amongst amongst his Dynamo teammates. So that very much could be the same in Everton once he grasps the language, which hopefully shouldn't be too too long. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with you know being quiet and as well. You know, you don't have to be outlandish all the time. Um, obviously, I've mentioned Luca Dean, and it it does look um, from the fans' point that he might be leaving Everton due to a bust up with Rafa Benitez. Um, obviously, Luca Dean is you know a certain you know a level that maybe Mikolenko isn't quite at just yet due to his age. Um, but how do you expect him to do if he comes in and replaces Digne? Uh Is he the type of left back to charge up the wing and get crosses in? Because um, I've saw some stats for him. Uh, they were, you know, flying around on Twitter from Y Scout, I think it was, uh, and it very much said that his he got crosses in, but they weren't as accurate, and he's much more of a retention type of player. Yeah, but that that's similar to what I've already been talking about. It's just the different styles of football that's required in Ukraine compared to compared to what's going to be happening at Everton, where even though he can get those crosses in on the occasion. There's even not an there's not an effective centre forward in the team that can deal with anything like that. They're even not in the right position, that kind of thing. Um, the ask for him to put those crosses in on a regular basis is not so high in Ukraine. Whereas I feel if even if you look at some of the stats for like um, the Ukraine national team, that's a slightly different story, where he's got a slightly better uh, centre forward um, and he's got. I just, in terms of his style of play and the matches I've watched of him, I feel that he's more prone to doing that kind of stuff for Ukraine than compared to Dynamo Kiev, where slightly different ball game against the opponents that he gets coming up against. So I'm sure that the experience that he does have um, with Ukraine that will very much help him um, adapt to um the Premier League sort of style, especially with Andrew Shevchenko being the manager for so long. Now he's no longer, but still that legacy is there and that's where he sort of broke into the team. So he can very much use that um sort of build up play football that Shevchenko tried to put in when he was the manager um into just in general uh life in the Prem. Yeah and like you said he's played in the Champions League so he'll be used to playing uh, teams, you know, like Barcelona, like you said, Juventus, who are much, you know, they are bar the top three, four in England. The rest of the teams are sort of, you know, best of the rest. Uh, not quite nowhere near the levels of them bar the top three, I'd say, at the minute. Um, so obviously that that allows for a little bit more. Um, is he is he quick? Yeah, he's definitely, he's got a lot of pace. I feel that's probably one of his main attributes and strengths. Um, also sort of one-on-one -on -one duels. He's quite good at them due to that. Um, you know, he can get the tackle in interception when he's up against that winger. So very much helps out. Um, and also when sort of playing on the counter or anything like that, good at driving with the ball. So, you know, releasing it to either the central midfielder if needed as well. And then, you know, sprinting down the pitch and trying to receive um, the next pass. So there's a variance into in his game, which I feel he he's potentially slightly more dynamic than Dean um, at the moment. Yeah, I'd have to agree. Um, just because I asked about the pace, because I was one of the um, 
And the very few criticisms Everton fans have of Luca Dean, but one of them is that he's not the fastest player in the world. Mm. Uh, and I, I, I doubt there'll be many people that argue that with me. You know, he's he's not the fastest player. So it'd be nice to have a little bit of pace going down that wing. Obviously, Damari Gray's there as well. So that left-hand side should be um, relatively rapid. Um, overall, would you say he's more of a defensive player than, than an attacking player? Obviously, you've mentioned it's a bit tough to judge him uh, when he's playing in the Ukrainian league because they sit back. But when he plays in the Champions League games, um, you sort of get, does he go a little bit more forward? And then would you say he's better there or do you think he's better defensively or is he just an all-rounder? See, it's a bit of a hit and miss question on the basis that his defending is good. But like I said, there's occasion on his decision making where, you know, it, it needs to be worked on slightly more. And I feel that he needs probably like a tougher defensive coach to fully help him with that. So he can use his strengths that we've already mentioned, sort of the pace and the recoveries that he can do to deal with the defensive problems that may come his way. But on the whole, I think that he's more well known um, and sort of more, you know, apparent to see in his attacking sense. You know, with the crosses that he delivers, with his uh, galloping down the down the flank, linking up with that winger. That's going to be hopefully Damari Gray if they can get a good connection going. Sort of um, that telepathy that you want between your fullbacks and your wingers then that should really be beneficial. And similarly, um, he can, he can when it comes to those duels and that kind of thing, he can very much step up to the plate. It's just going to be, we don't know how well he can do that um, on a regular basis, just because we've not seen that before. But we're hoping that due to his sort of young age, that he will be able to adapt and adjust and keep up with, <clears throat> the fitness and intensity of the Premier League. Well, from what from what you've told me um, about his attributes and stuff and the type of player he is, uh, I will say this, he very much sounds like a Rafa Benitez, is Everton style type player. Um, and I, I'm quite, he's young as well. Uh, like you said, you know, he's got a bit of ambition about him, which again is very welcome at Goodison Park. Um I've got hopes that he, you know, you've also said he can play build-up style as well. So if we do, which I think we will probably do, if not before this season, defo in the middle of the next season, change managers again. Uh, it also, <laughs> it's an 18-month thing at Everton. Every uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you have given me a bit of faith that if the inevitable happens or when the inevitable happens, he will manage to um, adapt to whoever comes in after him. He's not going to be a one-manager and then he's useless type player. He's going to, you know, be able to basically add another string to his bow, whoever's mm -hmm. in charge. Um, overall, then, is this a good move for Everton? And how would you rate it out of 10? I would say so. Um, just looking at sort of maybe if he was going to move to any other team in the Premier League, it's difficult to see where he'd slot in just straight away. Just because, I mean, there are a lot of strong left backs going around. Um, evidently, even if he was coming into Everton as like a rotation player and like Dean wasn't leaving, the whole different story for the amount of money you're paying for him and all that kind of thing. But I would say it's still a good move for both yourselves and for the player because he'd be getting, he, he's just going to get good experience from playing in the Prem and I feel that that is going to help build his both his confidence and his own sort of ability to help the team and like I said he's not some sort of outlandish star man because he's a left back to be you know to be frank he's not going to be that sort of probably uh, Luca Dean fantasy football superstar that everyone's been having over the past couple of years when he's been in form um, but he's very much reliable I think he's going to be that sort of understated fullback that will get the job done. Um, will get a few assists in him in, in himself over the season, and you know you never know. You might even double your money in, in a few years' time if he uh, if he really progresses. So I, I feel that there's every sort of possibility for this to be quite a good marriage um, for the time being. That's brilliant. Um... That's all my questions I've got for you, mate. I just want to say thank you very much for coming on the channel uh, and, you know, 
um, and to tell you know telling us a little bit more about him, teaching us a little bit more about him because. I feel like most Everton fans, we didn't know what to expect, but you've um, you've massively helped us sort of understand the type of player we're getting. So thank you for coming on. Lovely. No, thanks for inviting me. Uh, going to be looking forward to following Everton a lot more closely than I have been doing in the past few seasons. So should be fun as well from that point of view. Oh, I already I already pity you if you're going to follow. <laughs> <a little bit. laughs> Do you know what? I'm only gutted about the fact that you guys have got that Hummel kit at the moment. I'm not a fan of it. So, uh, Which one? Uh, I'm waiting. The black just, one. just black in general, one. just I've got a mate who's a Middlesbrough fan and he's had a few Hummel kits over the past few years and he just doesn't really rate the quality of them. So, um, I'm waiting for next year's specimen until, uh, until maybe I get a bit of McCollum merch from that point of view. <laughs> I have seen a couple mention the stuff comes off in the wash <laughs> and stuff mm. like that. The shorts are apparently a pain in the backside. Classic. <laughs> But yeah, don't forget everyone on YouTube um, to like the video, comment down below how excited you are to um, see Mikolenko come to Everton um, and subscribe to the channel. You can also check Andrew and Zoya Lundusk out. The links will be in the description down below. Uh, you can also get all your Everton stuff through the Everton Direct link in the description down below, along with your jumpers from the Toffee Blues and any retro kits from Score Draw. Uh, and most importantly, stay safe. Yeah.